Colossians chapter number 2, and I want you to turn with me there in the Word of God if you would. Colossians chapter number 2 today, and once you find your place in the Word of God, let's go ahead and stand this morning as we honor the Word of God today. Colossians chapter number 2, and uh, let's all stand together once you find your place. And uh, I want to look and read uh, just a few verses here uh, from this chapter of the Word of God today. Colossians chapter number 2, and I'll begin reading at verse number 1. Paul's admonishing the church Colossians here. I want to read this. It says, For I would that you knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, to all riches of the fullness or the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, Yet am I with you in the Spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with Thanksgiving. I want you to look at verse number 7 if you would this morning and I want you to look at the phrase established in the faith. Established in the faith. And this morning with the help of the Lord I want to preach on the thought and I'll use this word in our English language on being established in the faith. And what does that mean to be established in the faith? If you look this word up in the Word of God, uh, the King James Bible word established, you'll find out that it means entrenched, it means fixed, or it means settled. In other words, when God says we are established in the faith, we are entrenched in the faith, we are fixed in the faith, and we are settled in our faith in Christ. And so this morning with the help of God, I want to look at that. We'll focus a lot on the word entrenched today. The word entrenched. I love that word used uh, here as a synonym for our word established in the Word of God. All right, let's bow together and pray. Father, thank you so much today, Lord, for the opportunity that we've had to enjoy the choir. Uh, Miss Tanya, Lord, singing to us about being in your perfect will for our lives. Thank you, Lord, for those that have gathered here today. And we pray your blessings upon them. Thank you for Spanish church this morning, super church going on now. Lord, we thank you for having our brother Nate with us. And I pray you'll use him tonight and speak to our heart. Lord, I pray you'll help us all to be entrenched or established in the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we ask it all in Christ's name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated. I want to say this to you just real quickly today. I have, don't ever know that all the time that I've been in the ministry, and that is a lot of years, that is uh, 18 years at this church, two years in evangelism, 14 years at my church in Burlington. You're welcome to add it all up. But I do not know that I've ever seen a time as important as right now to be established in the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know that I've ever seen a time as I see right now that we need to get anchored down and locked in and decide we're going to serve God more than we ever have in our lives. Amen. It is true and I've heard it often. There are people that are no longer involved in the work in the church of God. 
And it's not just because of someone afraid to get sick. It's not just because of someone that has health issues. We understand those. But the scary thing is, it's for those uh, uh, that kind of were already uh, slipping the wrong direction. uh, And then the devils gave them an excuse. uh, And they're no longer in the work of God. Friend, it is a dangerous time not to be established in the work of Christ. Amen. I love the word entrenched. It's a great word. It's got an idea, Brother Corey, of digging yourself a foothold and standing strong. Of being entrenched in the work of God. I want to give you what some men in the Bible thought about this idea of being established in the Word of God. Here's what Joshua thought about it. Here's what he said. He said, If it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. Then I love this great phrase, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You know what Joshua said? My family's going to serve God. My house is going to serve God. We are entrenched in the service of God. Amen. Amen. Let's think about what Moses said. Moses said it like this in Exodus 32. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, here's the phrase, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. Let me say this to you today. Moses said, Who is on the Lord's side? You know what he said? Who's entrenched? Who's standing strong? Who's going to be faithful? Who is on the Lord's side? And I want to say this to you right now, friend. I want to say this to you right now. You better make up your mind. I promise you this, you better make up your mind whose side you're on. You're either on God's side or you're on Satan's side. There is no middle ground. Friend, there is no straddling the fence. There is, hey, who's on the Lord's side? I don't know about you, but I say this, I'm on the Lord's side. I'm glad. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. Amen. Need to, be a, need to be established in the faith. Moses said, Moses said in the word of God, he said who's on the Lord's side. Then I think about Elijah. Listen to what Elijah said about being established. Elijah said in Exodus 32, or excuse me, 1 Kings 18, and Elijah came unto the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him, not a word. Here's what Elijah said. If God's God, follow him. If he's not, follow what else you got. Friend, I got news for you. I'm not going to follow some pot belly Buddha. I'm not going to follow some charismatic on a three corner handing out flowers. I'm going to stay with the old time way. My King James Bible. Old time religion. I'm going to stay with God. I'm not ashamed to be on the Lord's side this morning. Amen. That's what three great men of God said about being entrenched, established. But I want you to watch this. Most Baptists sing a hymn entitled, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. But the problem with that, we sing that song and then we're moving all over the place. Amen. Can I tell you this, friend? It's not going to get any better as far as the world is concerned. This world hates God. It will always hate God. It does not like God. And it's not going to get any better. But guess what? The church is still alive. And it is still well. And God's still on the throne. I'm entrenched. I'm not going anywhere. I want to serve God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to say this to you today. You've got to get established in the faith. You've got to get established in the faith. Amen. You boys got to pull up your big boy britches. Amen. You've got to take a stand for God. 
get established in the faith. Trust God. Can I tell you this today? Ain't nobody like him. Uh, amen. I love it as Dr. Larry Brown used to say uh, down in North Augusta. Ain't nobody like him. Can I say this without a shadow of a doubt? I'd rather be on the Lord's side than Trump's side. I'd be on the Lord's side than Biden's side. Thank God. I'd rather be on the Lord's side than any other side. Every side's got flaws. Every side might lose. Uh, but I'm glad the side I'm on, uh, it will not lose. Uh, it is victorious. Uh, I'm glad I'm on the Lord's side. How many of you are glad you're on the Lord's side today? Established in the faith. Established in the faith. Amen. Praise God, I've been in this thing way too long. I, I'm going to use good old country word. I ain't going nowhere. Amen. I'm going to still tote my Bible. I'm going to still brag on my Jesus. I'm going to still tell everybody I'm born again. Hey, God, listen. I got you see the God I serve is bigger than Rona. Say amen. The God I serve is bigger than anything else. He's a mighty God. A mighty fortress is my God. Friend, there is nothing God can do. Is anybody listening to me? Amen. Now, if you would. I want you to look back with me just a moment to our text. And I want you to see the Bible says, rooted and built up in Him, established in the faith. I want to give you three little quick things. Number one, growing Christian. Number two, guided Christian. And then finally, number three, and I like this one, a grateful Christian. I want you to think about this first of all. I want you to think about it, if you would this morning in the Word of God. Now listen, I want you to think about this strongly. Because I believe it's important. I want you to think about a growing Christian. And you say, preacher, what do you mean a growing Christian? Look at your Bible. Your text verse says this. Rooted and built up in Him. Don't you notice something? It doesn't say rooted and built up in the faith. It says rooted and built up in Him. Can I tell you, friend, it has always been about Jesus. It always will be about Jesus. If, listen, can I say this today, dear friend? If you and I are anything and we ever become anything, we don't owe it to some church. We don't owe it to some preacher. We don't owe it to some singer. Friend, I am what I am by the grace of God. And that's who we owe that to. I thank God for the great impact of preachers in my life and good songs in my life, good church in my life. But they ain't nobody like him. Amen. Now watch this. The Bible says now he would establish us to live for Christ. Watch what the Bible says now. Look at it. Rooted and built up. Notice the phrase in him. I began to look that phrase up in my Bible when I thought about it in Him, you would not believe how many times you find throughout the Word of God, whether it be a few words in between or the exact phrase, in Him, in Him. I like one of my preacher friends said years ago, he says, you know what? If we do anything good, it's not us, but it's what's in us. Amen. It's not us, but it's what's in us. I want you to notice the growing Christian. The songwriter said it well, On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. The psalmist said, My heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. You know what he's praising it for, Brother Jonathan? Salvation. Salvation. That's why a while ago, if some of y'all are saved the way you were singing that congregation song, listen to me now. Don't get quiet. We're not praying yet. Look up here. If some of you are saved, you need to get as excited about being saved as you are the restaurant opening. Amen. Amen. Friend, I'm telling you, if we leave our house, and we forget our cell phone, you think the world ended. Oh my Lord, what am I going to do? 
I left my cell phone at home. Oh, nobody will get in touch with me. Hey, you know what I call that? I call that the 70s and 80s and 90s. Amen? Praise God, I used to get on the dirt bike, go out in the woods, Brother Paquette. Be gone for four hours. My mom and daddy never were to lick. They figured I was either having fun, they'd find me somewhere later on. They never worried about it a lick. Right? We leave our house to go to church. I guarantee if you were halfway to church, you thought, oh Lord, I left my cell phone. You'd turn around and head back to the house. How many people leave their house on Sunday morning and go to church, didn't get Jesus right with them before they left, don't want to turn around and go back home, get out on the side of their bed and say, God, before I go to church, before I go to worship you, I want to make sure everything's all right between me and you. Amen. See, here's the deal. You've got to be in Christ. Amen. Got to be hid in Christ. Evidently, we're already having the apocalypse. The helicopters are coming in. You got to be in Christ. What I mean by being in Christ, you got to be saved. Amen. You can't be a Christian and not be saved. Oh, I grew up in a Christian home. I grew up in a Christian country. I grew up around Christian people. Friend, that's great. I walk in a bakery, but it don't make me a loaf of marina bread. You cannot be saved just by saying that you are. You got to be in Christ. Amen. I'm glad, thank God, when I got saved, He got in me. Holy Ghost, I can wave at him, amen. He got in me. But I'm going to tell you what, I'm glad I'm safe in him, Brother Kimmer. I'm glad I'm safe in him. I'm glad I'm standing on the rock. You've heard me say this for years. I may shake on the rock, but the rock will never shake under me. Can I get an amen? How many of you glad you're saved? Can I get an amen? How many of you real glad you're saved? Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. That's a growing Christian. By the way, you can't grow if you're never born. That, y'all ever had that second grandbaby yet? Still not. I wondering about that because I didn't see nothing about it. Wow. Still awaiting. All right. That baby's singing, I shall not be moved, evidently. Amen. But you know what? It ain't nothing like when you look at that little baby. And, and you know, I'll be honest with you. Now don't get all bent out of shape at me for this. But I ain't never looked at a newborn and thought, even when my own daughter was born. You know, the first thing my wife said when my daughter was born, clean that thing up. I'm being honest. Am I telling you right, Miss Wendy? That's exactly what she said. Clean, clean her up. Okay. Wendy, I'm preaching. I'm trying to evangelize here. I'm... I'm I'm exaggerating. Not really. She did. I walked over there and looked at her, and I'll be honest with you, I didn't jump up and down and say, ain't she beautiful? Now, it would tickle me to death. I was glad my daughter was there, but Lord, have mercy, she needs some work. (laughs) Amen. And you know what? After she's home a few weeks, screaming throughout the night, screaming in Olive Garden, I thought, man, I'd be glad when you grow up. (laughs) Clean your own backside. Quit throwing up on my suit. Spitting up. You know why? It's good to be a baby. But it's also good when they grow up. Now you say, oh, preacher, that day they leave the house, it's going to break your heart. I'm not having a real problem with it. Y'all know me, I love my daughter, I love my daughter to death. But man, being able to take a hot shower any time of the day, being able to get in the bathroom, knowing there's a husband paying the bills and her paying her own. You say, Bridget, you don't love her. Friend, I love her enough to push wind in front of a train if we needed to. But I will tell you this, I'm glad she's grown to a young woman she is. And if you're a child of God, if you're a child of God, friend, I'm going to tell you this, Christ is in you. You need to be established in the faith. You need to be entrenched. 
You can't be in trees if you don't grow up. The people that will get away from God during this time will be people that are not entrenched in the faith. Amen. Notice secondly real quick. Rooted and built up in Him. That's in Christ. Established in the faith. Look at this. As you have been taught. That would be the guiding of a Christian. To be established or entrenched, we must have the proper guidance in our life. You can't live on emotion. I know there's a lot of people in our day and time and they try to live on emotion. Boy, if the church is emotional that day, it was a good day. We're not always going to be emotional. We're not always going to shout. We're not always going to be running the aisles. But I'll say this to you. We need to be growing and we need to be guided by the right things. You know what to keep you established in the faith? Let me give you three things. Number one, Scripture. The Bible says, Psalm 119, 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. This Bible will keep you established. This Bible will keep you where you need to be with God. Amen. It'll do it. This word right here will keep you entrenched. You get away from this book. Live your white life contrary to this book. Live your life without acknowledging this book. You lose the map. You lose the guidance. You lose direction. And you're no longer entrenched. You've got to have the right things, God, in your life. Not only that, but think about this. Also, we're not just guided by Scripture, but we're guided by the Spirit of God. The Bible says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You want to be entrenched? You've got to let the Holy Ghost lead your life and direct your life. That means you got to let the Holy Ghost direct your dating life. Let the Holy Ghost direct your educational life. Let the Holy Ghost direct your life in who you marry in one day. You better. You get with the wrong one, you'll wish you hadn't. Amen. I tell you, I'm convinced in our day, people don't pray over that thing enough. Right? Somebody just sees somebody, they think, oh, I'm just so, listen, just make sure that that God's in it. You never know what God might do with your life one day, who God might put you with one day. Hey, I'm telling you, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, let the Spirit of God guide you. Then I'll say this, here's another way you can be guided by the servant of God. The Bible says in Hebrews 13, said, remember them which have the rule over you. Who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Can I tell you this? You better listen to the preacher. I'll be the first one to admit to you that there's a lot of things that I do not know. I'll be the first one to admit to you that I do not have all the answers. But I will be the first one to admit to you that knows this. I know without a shadow of a doubt that God has called me to be a pastor teacher. And God has called me to give you the word of God. Friend, it is not my word that will change your life. It is God's word that will change your life. And God has instructed us to preach the word in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort. I don't care what that preacher said. I'm going to do what I want to do. You go ahead and do that. You go ahead and give out a shot. Usually you're one that comes back in the office and said, Preacher, I blew it. Preacher, I messed up. Most pastors want to look at you and say, Should have listened to me, dummy. But we can't do that. So we'll say, Well, bless your heart. That means the same thing. Right? Can I say this today? As Christians, if we're going to be entrenched, entrenched, we need to be growing. We need to be guided by the right things in our life. Honor you and Elena. Jonathan, is Jonathan here today? Jonathan over there with you? All four of y'all. 
Here we go to college. Of course, Jonathan, you've already, I mean, uh, Jamie, you've already been there. Girls, I'm going to tell you something. If you think Christian college is going to make you everything you need to be, you're wrong. This can be the first time in your life you're going to have some freedom. Right? You say, I have freedom. You live with Clark and Robin Paquette, you ain't have no freedom. You know what I'm talking about. No, I'm just kidding. But listen, you're going to have freedom. But I'm going to tell you something. You quit letting the right things guide you. Amen. And I'll tell you right now, Clarence Section will never be your pastor. Chris Hazelf is. And he'll drive up the road. And if one of you gets sideways, we'll straighten you out. Amen, Jonathan. I said, Amen, Jonathan. Thank you, sir. Got to get an amen from you. I ain't moving on. Am I right? I want you to understand as a Christian, we got to have the right things to guide us in our life so we can stay entrenched. Because I got news for you. There's going to be a lot of things trying to pull you away. You better, you better have the right stuff. You better be locked in tight. You better have some Holy Ghost red locked tight on you, I'm telling you. Amen. You better have that on you. Y'all know y'all happy because I don't preach long as John Hamlin does. Watch this now, the guided Christian. The growing Christian, you can't grow if you've never been saved. If you're here today, you've never trusted Christ. Let me tell you this, great decision you ever make is trusting the Lord. Amen. Well, preacher, I got too much life to enjoy to be saved. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. When I got saved, my favorite thing was I saw him would be I just started living. Amen. Amen. Can I tell you this? I see so many Christians walk around with their head down and like, oh, it's me. Hey, this is the greatest life. I was thinking this morning, I was out early this morning, how wonderful it is to be saved. How wonderful it is to be a Christian. How wonderful it is to have my family and my wife that loves me. How wonderful it is to have my daughter and son-in-law that love us and love the Lord. How wonderful it is to have this church. Friend, the Christian life is still the best life you can live. You say, but preacher, Christians have a lot of problems. You're right about that. Man's days are few and full of trouble. But that's all right. This world's not my home just passing through. Amen. Let's look thirdly. Look what it says. It says, root and built up in who? Him. Established in the face of you been taught according therein with Thanks, excuse me, I want to go back and read that again. Abounding therein, that's part of my thought. I missed that word, I missed it all. Abounding therein with thanksgiving. Abounding therein. What I mean Christians are abounding in thanksgiving. We're the whiningest, griping, complaining people. That's why I can't, I just, I've got, I just can't watch the news. I watch the local news to see what the governor's doing real quick. I watch the weather. But sometimes I turn on, you know, I've always watched Fox and Friends in the morning. But I'll be honest with you, man. I ain't never heard so much doom and gloom in my life. Right. One going to argue against the other one. Everybody right. Lord, have mercy. Vote already. Amen. I'm just going to throw this in. I got another doing the message. Wendy hates this. But just a little rabbit here. I'm going to throw it in. If you can get on the streets and protest and stand out in a bunch of groups, you can get yourself to the line and vote. And you can vote for a Republican, your choice. I don't care. You've got a will. You can do whatever you want. Paul said, look around you and be grateful. Are you listening? Is anybody listening? Are you with me? What established Paul? Watch this. Paul said in Philippians 4, 
Not that I speak in respect of want, for I've learned in whatsoever state I am. That's not talking about North Carolina and Virginia. I have learned in whatsoever state I am. Watch this. There we have to be content. Anybody struggle with contentment? Do y'all ever struggle? Look at all y'all precious folk. Y'all don't struggle with anything. Do bless your heart. I'll raise my hand. Right? Sometimes we struggle with contentment. We're never satisfied. We always want more. Got to have more. You know why? Because things and stuff never satisfy. One of you girls one day going to get this boy and you're going to say, oh, I'm content now. Yeah, do you see him one day and he don't look like he did when he come pick you up on a date? Yeah, wait till you wake up beside that girl one day after you marry her. And she ain't done no making up yet. Mess all up in her eyes. Hair all curled, all webbed up. Breath smell like rotten egg. You ain't going to be so content. You're going to be like, Lord, have mercy. What did I do? I might be a little exaggeration there, but I'm telling you, there won't nothing really satisfy you but Christ. I love my wife with all my heart. We've been married a lot of years, a lot of years. I love her with all my heart. I love her, but listen, I've never really been 100% content with her as far as things she does. She's never been that way with me. Now, we love each other. I'm content enough to be been there a long time. But at the same time, we have flaws. And there's only one that I know I can have complete contentment in. And that's Christ. Right? Paul said in Hebrews, and I believe he's the writer of Hebrews, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Can I ask you something this morning? Are you established in the faith? How far do your roots go? Redwood trees in California. Huge redwood trees. The redwood trees in California have some of the smallest root systems of any tree in the world. Think about a tree you can drive a car through. But the, but the root system is not as big as an oak tree or a pine tree. Where their strength lies is redwoods' roots will attach to another redwoods' roots. And it strengthens them all. Where's your roots? First time the wind blows, you're going to fall on somebody's house? First time a storm comes, first time a pandemic comes, two hurricanes at one time come, somebody needs to wake up my soul. Earthquake in California, two hurricanes one time, COVID-19, fire burning up the state of California. Hello, Tokyo. Well, where's God at when we're suffering like this? He's mad! You established? How established are you going to be when they start saying, take a vaccine chip? There's countries already now buying their groceries with their hand. Money is already being done away with around the country. I told you the other week, I paid for something in sheets. And the girl owed me a dollar fifty, she gave me a dollar. I said, ma'am, she said, Oh, I can't give you any change. We just we don't we can we don't give change. We don't have any. And the lady was working with her said, What are you doing? And she said, Well, we don't have change. She said, You can't keep his change from him. He needs it's a dollar fifty. And they gave me 50 cent, you would have act like I was asking for gold at Fort Knox. 
It was mine. Give me my 50 cent. That's America. We got, we're out of change. <laughs> what? No, we're not. We're out of sense is what we are. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> hey, that worked good, didn't it? Change sense. Didn't that work good? How established are you? I don't know how it is up your way, Brother Nate. Sister Ram, I don't know how it is when you're dead. But we're seeing a lot of people that can be in church that aren't in church. Because to be honest with you, they weren't established. That's scary. If this is all it takes, now I'm not talking about people legitimate reason. You know what I mean. If this is all it takes to get us to quit on God, What's going to happen if Biden goes in with the most liberal vice president who's going to be the president? Because Biden's going to go to a dinner party at the Clintons. And he ain't going to make it. And then she's going to be your president with an agenda of killing babies at birth. You think God's going to look away from that? sodomy in the streets, no police, it's going to be a war zone. How established are you? Well, I ain't going to go to church today. I got to drive through town. Somebody might try to get in my car. Shoot. I'll be honest with you, I love Jesus and I love folk and I hope they write with God because you try to get in my car with my family, it ain't going to be good for you. I got police officers sitting in this building right now, God bless all of them's heart. I, listen, somebody bothers them, stomp a mud hole in them. You better be established. Amen. We just got word, got another protest going on in states for tonight. Our police officers got to go deal with it. Be another boy who weighs about 112 pounds with a toboggan on his head. Better be established. Better be solid. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Better make sure you're not. Amen. Because the day we're living in right now, y'all heard this statement, it's going up when the rubber meets the road. We're going to find out who's real and who's not. Amen. For the most part in America, we've never suffered much religious persecution. We haven't. But I have feelings coming. Boy, you better pray for November. Amen. I'd just like to see your pastor in handcuffs. Wait, I, don't, I better not ask that. Your pastor in handcuffs going out a door because he was at church on Sunday. And the choir director getting locked up because he them folks sung today. Right. America. Established in the faith. Established in the faith. Established in the faith. Rooted and grounded. In the faith of Jesus. Amen. You know what God said about Jeremiah? You got to get your, get your head, your, your forehead hard as a flint. Got to get be a hard head, hard headed preacher. We live in day and time. We better get established in the faith. Amen. I'm going to ask you something. Are you saved? How many in this building right now is a little way of saying, just say amen, don't have to raise your hand. If you know you're saved, say amen. amen. That's a good thing to know now. Know I'm saved. I was there when it happened. Halfway down the aisle, me, Jesus, 
Holy Ghost, God the Father, have we done aisle, born again, 17 years old, I know I'm saved. I know I'm saved. I can take it to the spot. Do you know you're saved? They need to be established. You need to be established in the faith. You need to know that you're saved. Are you listening? You Amen. need to know that you're saved. Amen. You know you're saved, Brother Barrett? Which means you know you're saved. You need to know you're saved. Isn't it good, sister? Got saved during this pandemic. I was preaching one night, looking at the phone. And she got down by her bed, gave her life to Christ. Amen. Got saved by the grace of God. Amen. Isn't it good to know? Isn't it good to know you got saved, wife, our brother? Isn't that good to know? Hallelujah. Amen. Brother Amen. Heath, you say? Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad of that? Amen. Toby, you say? Amen. Brother Dermont, you say? Amen. Are you glad? Amen. Hallelujah. Are you established in the faith? Watch this. Not only are you saved, let me ask you this. Are you being guided by the right things? Don't let the news be your guide. Right. Amen. Don't let the TV be your guide. Don't let some lunatic politician be your guide. Scripture, spirit, servant of God. Let me ask you this. How grateful are you? How grateful are you? You know, we used to make a statement, if God never did anything but save me, that's enough. Hog wash. Because as soon as God don't do no more but save us, we start having a few problems, we're going to be whining up and down the street. Or at least I will be. I know me. You say, preacher, why do you say that? Well, why do you? Because we need to be great. <laughs> Miss Wendy, God's been good to us. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You in that house yet, Brother Jeff? Miss Rebecca, do you like that house? That's your house, ain't it? Them girls got a room, don't they? Isn't that great? Girls, do you like your room? You know why you got what you got right now? Because God's been good. God's been good. Brother Brad called me the other day. I don't think he'd mind me telling you this. But Brother Brad called me the other day. And he said, Preacher, it's amazing what God's done in my life. He said, it wasn't long ago. Miss Pam, it wasn't long ago. Brother Brad said, I wouldn't known if I could have drove over to somewhere and got a, got a lunch for my kids. I'd have had the money to buy a meal for my family. And he said, God's been good to me. He said, everything's changed. And I'm so happy for him. I love when he calls me sister. And God's got a plan. God's got plans. God knows what he's doing. Amen. You like that new house you live in there? Sister Emily, you like that house? But that big old pool back there and the waterfall. You like that, don't you? Be honest. Don't you like it? God been good to you. God been good to your daddy mama. That's right. Toby with a fiance. <laughs> brother, brother, I have seen it all, brother. I have seen it all. Toby found a woman that's sticking. You happy though, I can tell it. She just, she's just like, she's just, a, you like her, don't you? Love her, I know you do, I don't blame you. Nice young lady, amen. She loves you. You know I'm picking, you're a good looking young man. But I'm going to tell you this, what about you? Raising that godly home. God had a man for you, them precious babies you got. Miss Norma grandbabies. Forget them, grandbabies, right? Am I right? How established are you? Are y'all listening to the preacher? Twelve and seven, Lord have mercy. I'm going into overtime. Hush, Wendy. Thank you, Brother Corey. I'm going to give an invitation and then I'm going to ask you a question. Number one, are you established in him? Are you saved? Number two, are you guided by the right things in your life? If your life's guided by Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, that's what guides you, you need to cut that mess off. Amen. And you need to get you some scriptures, 
Spirit of God, listen to the servant of God. Amen. Those things can be right in the proper place, I guess. I don't even know what Instagram is. I don't have it, don't know what it is, don't want to know. I think it's wonderful. As a matter of fact, I don't know. I know President Trump knows what Twitter is. But I'm going to tell you this. That better not be the stuff guiding your life. Amen. That'll be that book Brother Ryan's holding. Amen. 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 Anybody grateful? Amen.